A call for safety in work zone areas. Good evening. This is CTV News. I'm Patricia Vallone. And I'm Byron Scott. Governor Martin O'Malley has declared April Work Safety Month. With spring upon us and more highway construction crews on the roads, officials are asking motorists to be aware. And um, it was a clear day. The ramp was not crowded that day. It's been seven years since Lori Moser's husband, Rick, was killed while working in a highway construction zone. Our life has been really challenge, challenging. You know, for me, um, I became a single parent, not by my choice, certainly not by my husband's choice. Um, and it was daunting to me to think of raising a 10-year-old boy without his father and send my daughter off to college without her father. Today, Moser joined state highway administrators and state police at an upper Marlboro work site to talk about a growing problem in Maryland. During 2013, across Maryland, there were eight people killed in highway work zones. That's up from three work zone deaths for 2012. And according to highway officials, there were more than 8,300 accidents in work zones from 2008 to 2013. Work zones just in general are dangerous for both drivers and our highway workers who are out there doing the work and getting the job done. Uh, uneven pavement, concrete barriers, lane shifts, mm -hmm. uh, many things that people need to focus on, the driving that they're doing and avoid distractions and slow down. Drivers just really need to think about everyone around them. I think in Moser's case, her husband was killed while picking up debris on the shoulder of the road. A pickup truck driver veered across the shoulder line, struck Rick from behind, and he was thrown 175 feet and killed upon impact. Trooper Michael Tagliaferro has responded to several work zone accidents. And is it almost always speed a factor? Um, it, it's, it's a variety of factors. Speeding, uh, distracted drivers uh, with, with new technology, um, drivers are faced with, with, with more options uh, you know, while driving in a vehicle. Obviously, the idea is to get motorists to slow down and pay attention in work zones. And police say one of the most effective tools they have in their arsenal right now is mounted on that truck. Seven SUVs have been mounted with speed cameras. They are mobile and more than happy to snap your picture. The Safe Zones pro program is very effective. 80% mm -hmm. uh, reduction in um, speeding um, citations issued. Officials are asking motorists to go orange this month as a reminder in honor of those who died in work zones and to help prevent any more deaths. Because everyone deserves to go home to their families that night. The State Highway Administration will place orange lights on its main building. And they are asking people to wear something orange during the month of April. Motorists beware, a major Prince George's roadway will be closed for several days. Several highway officials say a section of Route 301 will be closed Friday evening, April 11th, until Monday morning, April 14th. The north and southbound lanes of 301 will be shut down between Chu Road and the Marlboro Crossroads area just south of Pennsylvania Avenue. Detours will be set up to help you navigate through the heavily traveled areas. The road is being closed because CSX Transportation Railroad is making repairs in the Upper Marlboro Railroad Crossing. Police have called off the search for a missing girl at a park in D.C. Investigators believe that Relisha Rudd may have been killed and her body dumped at the park. But after several days of searching, her body was not recovered. CTV's Darcy Spencer has the latest from Kenilworth Park. Kathy Lanier says that the search for eight-year-old Relisha Rudd will wrap up here today at Kenilworth Park in Northeast Washington. She says investigators have found no sign of the missing little girl here. Police pulled down the caution tape at the park where they searched 700 acres over the last seven days trying to find the body of Relisha Rudd. Chief Lanier says it's a bittersweet ending. As we said when we started, we were looking for possibly a gravesite on a recovery operation. So we're relieved that we didn't find that, but we still don't have answers. During the search, they did find the body of Khalil Tatum, who committed suicide. He's a janitor at the homeless shelter where Relisha was staying with her family. Relisha's mom has said she let Tatum take her daughter, never thinking he would harm her. We have not turned up anything in this search that has answered any questions for us about Relisha's whereabouts. Tatum was suspected of killing his wife at an Oxon Hill motel. Police issued a murder warrant, but he took his own life before he was arrested. There's concern that he may be the only one who can lead authorities to Relisha. We hope she's still alive, Darcy. We hope she's still alive. 
Shannon Souder drove to the park from Glen Burnie with her husband to offer help in the search. She's the mother of eight-year-old triplets. Not knowing, you know, where they are, what, what's going on. I, I mean, I prob I'm not the type of person that will just let anyone take them anyway, but um, I, 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 no, I could not imagine. Now, Chief Lanier was asked about the possibility of conducting a landfill search for Relisha Rudd. And the chief says a search of that nature would be extremely difficult and hazardous. And she says searches like that typically don't produce positive results. In Northeast Washington, Darcy Spencer, CTV News. Now, Lanier has also said she plans to release pictures of people that police would like to identify and talk with about this ongoing investigation. Jury selection for an accused drug trafficker charged in a 2010 quadruple homicide is delayed due to motions filed by the defendant. Darrell Ballard faces four counts of murder for allegedly shooting two women and their children in retaliation for an unpaid drug debt. The bodies of the four victims were found in an apartment above a garage. If convicted, prosecutors were originally seeking the death penalty, which would have given Ballard the right to have the trial jury perform sentencing instead of the judge. But on the state abolished corporal punishment last year, he now faces a maximum sentence of life without parole. The law is unclear as to whether or not that means he still has has the right to jury sentencing if convicted. A judge will hear arguments from both sides Monday at a motions hearing. Winter may be behind us, but state regulators are beginning an investigation into some energy suppliers' practices. The Public Service Commission says hundreds of complaints came in from Marylanders this winter after seeing their gas and electric bills double. The commission has ordered five companies to show why they shouldn't be fined, have their license revoked, or pay refund checks to consumers. The companies that are being investigated are American Power Partners, Blue Pilot Energy, Major Energy, Maryland Gas and Electric, and Zoom Energy. And you are watching CTV News. I'm Patricia Vallone. And I'm Byron Scott.